by Barton Community College. Explore your future and get started now. Visit GoBarton.com. Okay, sports day in three, two, one. Just gets the ball in. Ahead to Timberlake on the run. It's a block. And he misses the shot. Wow. Man, with the game on the line, that is an incredible block that just got taken away from Sanford. Gene Steratore, do you agree with us? I do agree with you guys. Uh, yeah, I was definitely fouled on the breakaway, but um, uh, I think it all started this morning to shoot around. Uh, I was feeling pretty good uh, and just carried over into, uh, into the game. There's no whistle. We're going to have a numbers advantage going the other way to advance to round two. That's how close the game was. And that's how well our guys played. We're down by 22 and we're going to have the ball there with a great opportunity. So, you know, it is what it is. Yes, we're relieved, uh, excited, and uh, proud to get an opportunity to advance. I thought Sanford was great. Blackman fakes the three. Now he'll take it and make it. Eighth three-pointer of the half. For John Calipari's got to go back to old-school John Calipari. Not swaggy Cal, old-school Cal, where his teams were tough, physical, played with the chip. He did at a very high level. Drew Ryman said every play, and it was a team you did not want to play against. Shot clock is under 10. Let's see, high stepping on Chilovich for three. It's good! He has certainly found his stroke. He has 15. I'm just really excited. I think it'll be a great atmosphere, and it just adds to, you know, being able to host and, you know, being able to play in front of our fans. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll be exciting, and I think we'll get the sellouts. John Calipari's got to go back to old-school John Calipari. Not swaggy Cal, old-school Cal, where his teams were tough, physical, played with the chip. He did a very... Dad gummit. Welcome to Sports Day on 1590 KVGB, 95.5 FM, the talk of the town. Never have two consecutive cuts together that really sound the same. Right in St. John, Pony Rock, all through there. Yeah. That's the old South 56 lead that uh, when Pony Rock was in. Gerald Apple played for Bell for Belpre to Haven, who passed away. He was a special team coach for Buffalo for many years. He was from Belpre. Played against uh, Bruce. Played against Daryl. There you go. Sounds the past 24 hours. Welcome to Sports Day on 1590 KVGB, 95.5 FM, the Friday edition. Steve Webster, your host. Mike Corson, he's in the building. He'll join us here momentarily. Aaron Clark is in. And Mike Hesher. On the program today, well, we're just a few days away. We're getting closer here as the Barton Basketball Cougars will play in the national tournament. 2.30 Monday against either Daytona State or Walter State in Hutch, and we'll talk to, talk about it with Jeremy Combs will be in with us. Sunflower Sports Solutions' Connor Nickel has early observations on the high school spring sports season. Have the latest from the NCAA tournament, all your Friday headlines, and the sounds of the past 24 hours or so. So let's get started. Call last night on TBS as the foul is called on A.J. Stanton McCray after he attempted to block a dunk by Kansas guard Tim Nick Timberlake. Timberlake made both free throws. Kansas hanging on to beat Samford 93-89. They advance to the next round. They'll have them play Gonzaga in the second round tomorrow at 2.15. Nick Timberlake said, yeah, he, he fouled me. Where? He fouled me. He made two free throws. Yeah, Timberlake had a big game, 19 points, and moves him on to the next round. Bucky McMillan, the Sanford head coach, what he saw in the Timberlake dunk, credit to Bucky. He brought that up several times but didn't say that was the reason they lost there's a lot of other things that had to happen but yeah interesting plan then bill self just happy to get the win 22 point lead down to one and then the play happened it's just terrible for uh samford the fact that he got the block off clean was all ball and it gets called back it's a tough break but on the other hand Sanford did have two blown defenses uh, before that that resulted in clean looks at the rim for KU. And then the only reason Timberlake had the opportunity to go up for that dunk was because of another busted, broken defensive coverage from Sanford. You'd like to see him get that call right just because it needs to be right in that moment. But it's not like Sanford didn't have their opportunities to try to make plays uh, beforehand. Just a real shame that when they do make legitimately one of the better defensive plays I've probably seen I've probably seen for sure in the tournament just in terms of the chase down getting there the moment that it would have been had it gone blocked because you got to think 
uh, with Timberlake going to the ground, Stanford's going to have numbers on the other end. They're already a team well, that's that what everybody fast. said, but there were four there were four players down there. I mean, KU was on the other end. <laughs> And that's what I kept saying. Okay, they had numbers. I I don't know. Maybe they would have. Did KU's players run off the court? I mean, where were they at? Were they down at the other end? I think they had started moving in transition. I I don't know exactly. Well, that's what Mike Corson said. That, that hey, I the call. I mean, I can see where the official. You see oh, where absolutely. he called it from. Why he would have made that call, and especially when Timberlake hit the rim. That's then he kind of grabbed part. the net trying to catch himself. Then he fell down. So, I mean, the the optics there were there for the official to call it. But I, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. But then all this stuff, with, we're, we're going to have a, a breakaway at the other end. Where were the other KU players at? They were probably down on that other end. But okay, well, that's they, what I mean. They still would have had, it still would have been a five-on-four because Timberlake, it would have taken him a little while to get up because he did fall pretty hard. And so I think they would have had a five-on-four okay, right, situation. Okay, but it's not like a three. It's not like a big number, but one. when you do think about the way Samford did play, regardless, they do kind of get in that fast break, and yeah. even when an even number situation, like a five-on-five five situation, you don't feel great trying to stop Samford. So in a five-on-four, but I do see where you're coming. It's not like KU was in a bad defensive position with their four players. Uh, another thing with the call, it just seemed like everything was getting reviewed at that point in the game. Like there was a where lot, we're at in college basketball, and right just now. just not on not on that free throw or not on that that foul call. And I don't can they look to try to overturn no, a foul? Okay, no. see that's a that's Those are a boundary travesty. plays. That's just well, then you that well, see the NBA's gone to some of that, right? See, and it's and just, they're on calls, see, and, and I, then you're gonna stop it every stinking time. But it's egregious when you have it. So like then, this if you're gonna game. recall that, goes to where do they get the ball at? No, did, it felt particularly bad in that KU Sanford game because two or three plays in a row before that get reviewed, that play doesn't, and then the play after that gets reviewed too. And it's like we've clearly got the technology to be able to review or to and do then these you're replays. Stop the game and stop the game and stop the game. I, I think that's uh, no. I, it slows it down, but I think in terms of getting the proper outcome, because in a situation like this. That is a game-altering call. That's like that's not just some picky tack. Did they score? Did, was that, did they come down? To, I mean, do we know they, if they, they were forced to a three-point? They would have had to try for a three-point from the corner that they missed if they didn't they have that. They would have had the ball, and they would have had no other two way point down game. Like they could have just tried so for a two. So you're saying that changed the entire game. Yeah, it did. At the end, it but you're really saying did. that cost Sanford the win. It may not have cost them the win. It cost them the opportunity to get so the win because they were down the game by right four there. rather than two. No, you're crazy, Yes, man. absolutely. No. Why would you not? It's the proper outcome. It would have led to the proper outcome. In most situations, I give it to you. No. I don't know. No. Win and advance. Win and win, advance. Win and advance. Sanford had a great season. That's all I can say. Had, well, you, we talked about, okay, KU doesn't have any depth. 22-point lead. KU played great. They did, especially Hunter but Dickinson. Then at, but then at that that pace, well, here they come. They started to chip in. Man, they had some monster dunks of their own. KU had more dunks in that game than I think they've had in the last seven or eight combined. Who were you saying yesterday that – uh? Charted dunks? Dan McGovern. <laughs> Dan McGovern, there Dan we go. Dan McGovern, d- yeah. Well, I am very relieved that they win and go on. Now they'll take on Gonzaga, 86-65 winner over McNeese. <laughs> they need to play this in three days. Yes. I just got a text that says, what are they yelling about? <laughs> 86-65 over McNeese. Jayhawks and Bulldogs tip off in the second round from Salt Lake City at 2.15 tomorrow. Certainly wish that KU had the late game coming up tomorrow. <laughs> Again, that short turnaround, you play a game like that. Hey, at least they didn't get beat by Sam. And KU's got beat by a 15 before when KU was a 2. So I guess they survived. Last time KU didn't advance past the first round was a 2006. So able to keep that streak going. Hopefully they'll be able to push that past 20 years. Hop on board here. Come on in, Corson. You missed the fireworks. KU win? Did KU win? I missed it, didn't I? Yeah, you did. (laughs) Just a little bit. Figured that was first up. All right. The call on CBS, Blaine Lampkin, or Lampman, 
knocking down a right wing three. Oakland defeats Kentucky 80 76. Oakland now advances to face off with NC State after the 11 seeded Wolfpack was able to upset number six Texas Tech. Seth Greenberg on Kentucky coach John Calipari is getting a lot of heat today saying his team needs to be tougher. Okay, so what's that mean? Does that mean he needs to coach tougher? You can't coach tougher anymore. All your guys will go to another school where they don't. Where he yelled at me. I'm going to go to another place. I can get this money at another place. That's why you're probably see Bill Self. I wouldn't. You have more control over NBA players now than you do over college players. Tom Izzo was just on national radio this morning saying, you no longer coach players, you manage them. And they're starting to think they come in worried more about how much money I can make than how hard am I going to practice. And I'm guessing that's to the exponential factor at Kentucky where that's been a money-making factory for a decade. Yes. I do think calling it tougher for Calipari because, like you're saying, it's hard to be a tough coach right now because if you're too tough, a kid will go to a different school. But I do think it's an interesting point on how he has to adapt because the college landscape has changed I a think lot we'll see since some he first got look, in. Nick Saban. Exactly. And that's kind of what I was going to allude. Maybe we see some of these old guards, even in college basketball, start to, to hang it up because it's just... There were, there were reports that, you know, there were Alabama players that they didn't go to the coach. They went right to Sugar Papa and said, hey, you know, give me a little <laughs> bit of, uh, more Jack here and I'll play in the bowl game. And we don't know the numbers, but it would be curious, especially at some of the smaller schools, probably some of those kids are making more than coach. So what kind of leverage does that give them? It's. I'm also curious for uh, Saban. He had a, an LSU transfer come to him, and the player had been at LSU for about three years. And I just, I'm sure he was glad to have him transfer, but that couldn't have sat well with Saban. You know, just the fact that he'd been battling him for three years. I just can't imagine that was that was going well in Saban's dojo. Hey, if that's the new world of college basketball, well, there you go. I mean, I'm sure there's, you'll see. So, uh, let's see, Bucky Ball. Where's Bucky Ball going to be next year? I bet it's not going to be at Samford. No. No. I, I was watching him last night. I thought he was an older guy with Bucky, but... No, he's a young fella. He got him to the tournament, almost beat a blue blood. Typically, those guys don't stick around. No. And it's, I would not, we may see Bill Self's last game tomorrow. I, I mean, it's, <laughs> he, get, he does get guys for a few years, and, and he I, he's one of the, I would say, harder nose than you just heard Jerome Tang say the other day, and I think I heard somebody else say it. He's one of the best coaches whether that translates to the kids appreciating that they're being coached and yelled at, but he does get kids to stick around. Well, probably you know, if, above you don't, average. if you don't play defense, you know, or you know, you'll get your butt taken out of the game. You, and then they typically get better as the season goes on. That hasn't been the case this year. No, and I told you this morning, watching the game last night, I thought Achora Achora was a Division One kid, but for KU, Hunter Dickinson was the only Division One looking guy <laughs> they had on the floor. So. What are those kids going to do? They need coach. They need development. So you would think they would stick around with a marquee coach and get that. That's their future. Like, they're potential NBA players if they do a little bit more. But do they think like that? It's a good would coach you, would convince them. Would you, would you thought of that when you were 18 oh, and, and, they were gonna, and you were getting a million dollars to say, play somewhere? These are kids that are coming out of high school after just completely what dominating people. What would you have done people? if somebody yelled at you? I'd go run another ladder, Steve. <laughs> uh, yeah, the NCAA tournament's continuing. Uh, the best part of the tournament, oh, uh, Texas won the SEC team from the Big 12. They beat Colorado State. Colorado State was done worn down, weren't they? Uh, Duquesne beat BYU. Iowa State did win. Michigan State beating Miss, Mrs. I just don't know why I even threw that in there, but so we'll see how the Big 12 does. I think LeBron or somebody tweeted, I think it was Duquesne's first tournament win in like 1955. Seems odd. Long time for the Dukes. I, did I wonder how much NIL money they were getting back then. Well, it was all uh, paper bag money. <laughs> McDonald's bag money. I did see the uh, Duquesne-Illinois matchup in round two. Loser has to pronounce the S. 
Duquesne. <laughs> Duquesne or Illinois? Who is it? But <laughs> most people say Illinois, and I always want to throw a book at them. <laughs> did <laughs> Did Dewan Harris say foots yesterday? <laughs> I'm just, I was just wondering. Okay, 13 seeded Portland taking on Kansas State this afternoon. Uh, 3.30 tip, Ioka Lee excited for another home game, hoping for a sellout as K-State gets underway in the women's tournament. Glenn Grunwald, yesterday on Sports Day, we started off talking about the NJCAA National Tournament. It turned into the South 56 League discussion. I did, I don't think my tweeters ever, my tweeter phones ever lit up like it did yesterday. There was all kinds of, it, and one was, Zook was in the South 56 League. You know what about the Garfield Cardinals? Where you know who are they playing then? I'd were all these schools because I didn't get to listen yesterday. Were they playing eleven man football or was eight man around back then? Eight man was around back okay. then. Yeah. How long has eight man been around? Well, a long time. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know if you know off the top of your head. I just I had never thought about that before, but now I'm curious. I'm gonna have to look into that. Back when when I was on the sideline as like a six year old with at Cunningham and. You know, they were playing eight-man back then. Mr. Webster. Days. Yes. But that's pretty cool. Pawnee Rock. It, that, that was a scary town. I remember Pop would be leaving, man, to go coach. would ask Mom, well, where, where are they playing tonight? Pawnee Rock. Ooh, they just sounded good. Yeah, they rock. Um, Truesdale. Up north. How about Truesdale? You know where <laughs> I Truesdale is I will say at? I do not know what I was going to ask. You know where Truesdale is? I've been through Truesdale. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's kind of between uh, Maxville and Belpre, but it's further south. So draw a <laughs> so draw a triangle from Maxville south, and that would be Truesdale, and then draw it back to Belpre, the home of the Wolves. And we were talking a lot about Daryl Apple, who was a great basketball player there. And then understand he passed away here recently. So, all my heroes. So, what? Because it's remarkable that so many small schools existed, and now you'll get the conglomeration districts that can stretch on and on, and then there's still 1As. So, that, that would have been three districts into one, and it's still a 1A. What was it? Just people at farm life, and there was yeah. more rural community? More rural community. I, yeah, and there wasn't a lot of long distance games. You know, why would you? I mean, is you can Pawnee Rock to, to Radium was what? Twelve miles? Yeah, <laughs> no, I think could. there used to be what, three classes too, so you oh, I don't think B, you had the, the mega BBC, six A's, yeah. yeah. No, there's like two thousand teams that were <laughs> it was and the win a state title. Okay. Oh man, I got my endorphins flying after that. <laughs> that was, this is a good one. Oh, right, your thoughts on the call. Very exciting. <laughs> Enthusiasm <laughs> out the roof. Because I was asking, because you told me this morning that they would have the numbers. Were you talking about, like, it'd be five on four? When? With, after the block, because all okay, KU guys were still down at the yeah. other end. No, the next two guys down the court. So the only three out of the four guys in that half court were Samford, and one of them definitely grabbed the rebound. So I went back and watched it live just to see, did it impact the game? And it absolutely did, because... They absolutely got the ball. And then they would have had some space to run up into. Okay, but it wasn't going to be like a two-on-one break. I, that's the way I, I understood No, because, yeah, point. I think KU would You've already had your time this yeah. morning, so I'm, t I'm talking with, with Corson. <laughs> no, so seriously, I'm watching the replay, and they're saying this is the big call, and on national radio today it was a joke question. Was it the worst call in tournament history? So it is that impactful, but I was thinking the ball went out of bounds. So I realized I've watched this replay six times now, and I don't know where the ball went, so I rewound it, and sure enough, uh, Timberlake touches it, it goes off the backboard pretty hard and comes back out onto the court and gets snapped up by Sanford. But so we'll never know. Yeah, you can't say what they would have done with it, but you could definitely erase those two points and give Sanford the ball. So it, it was more impactful than I originally thought. Hey, Timberlake said he got fouled. I'm going to believe No, that. did he really? Yeah, yeah he I said he did. absolutely got fouled. <laughs> he didn't. By the rim. 
He got no, smoked by the rim. No, did you see him? He, his wrist. That's what. That's the reason he hit the. That rim. guy could have had COVID, and Timberlake wouldn't Listen, have gotten. This it. is this. Uh, yeah, I was definitely fouled on the breakaway, but there you go. Wow. Full face confidence. Like there wasn't high definition camera pointed right at him in slow mo. The show his fingertip didn't even get touched. I can't believe that ref didn't see it in slow mo either. No, no, I'm not blaming but the officials. They were trailing it because it was a fast break. Aaron and it, wants that replayed. Do what? He wants that replayed. There was discussion, and, man, they had, what, six, seven replays in the final. Those final 30 seconds took. What, what's that mean? It, uh, it, it's it's not it, part of the rule. I, that They don't review it. I don't want them to Because where would you draw the line? Point. Yeah, every, every charge, what are you going to do? There's always contact in basketball. Well, it, critical time, like in the final minutes. I don't even have your mic on right now. So, uh, <laughs> you can so we can go on to sports day. Coming up, Jeremy Combs here on the show. When it comes to car maintenance, it's good to know a local guy that can get things done. The Eller family has been in the auto repair business in Great Bend forever. Greg Eller continues that long tradition of helping people. Eller Automotive Repair specializes in wheel alignments, oil changes, and general maintenance for all makes and models of cars and small trucks. Open 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4 Fridays. Eller Automotive Repair at 915 Morton, right behind Great Bend Appliance, Furniture, and Sleep. Source, 10th and Morton. Want to graduate a little sooner? Take online courses with Barton Online and transfer seamlessly to your university of choice without all the hassle. We have six week and eight week sessions starting in February and March. Save tons of time and money and get ahead by taking courses at Barton and transferring your credits. Now enrolling for both sessions. Get started at online.bartonccc.edu. Extend the life of your equipment with Senex Premium Greases. Engineered with quality-based oils and well-balanced formulas to protect equipment in a wide range of temperatures and tough conditions. The Senex line of grease products offer excellent rust protection, water resistance, and anti-wear properties to extend equipment life. Senex Grease delivers the dependability you need to keep your operation running like a well-oiled machine. Contact American Plains Co-op Fuel Department in Great Bend, your certified Senex distributor today. It's time to talk Barton Cougar basketball with the head coach, Jeremy Combs, on 1590 KVGB and 95.5 FM. Jeremy Combs with us here on a Sports Day, very calm day here in the in the studio. <laughs> what do you think of that call last night? It was an interesting call. I, I mean, being a Kansas guy, obviously, uh, I was glad it was a foul, but uh, it was close. It was really close. You brought up a good point because my whole thing, Aaron wants to replay that i think they've gone to that in the nba maybe that's because maybe that is a a challenge mm -hmm. maybe it is i don't watch the nba that much yeah so is that an opportunity a challenge because even on all these boundary calls yeah i, I think mean we're doing I, everything right now i think it has to it would it, if that if there was going to be anything it would have to be some type of challenge i think if, if you're going to review everything i mean there were several games i watched yesterday that just seemed like they were dragging on and on and on and uh, so I think, you know, that's about the only way. Otherwise, those games are going to last forever. Yeah, okay. So. All right, enough about that tournament. You've had kind of an interesting week, right? I mean, it's... Yeah, it's been a whirlwind. Yeah, but uh, here you are on a Friday. So kind of tell me about the week right now and how do you prepare for... And how do you separate it out? Because one of the good things is, I mean, you do have a bye. You, you know either one or two teams. It's yeah. not like you have a turnaround the next night or something. But how's it been? Yeah, so we're... Uh, you know, we're, we have to sit and kind of wait and and see which team we're going to get. And, and uh, so we've – but the good thing is we've had enough time. You know, the NCAA tournament, they announce the tournament and they go play in, in a couple of days, whatever. You know, mm -hmm. we had a whole week to kind of sit there and, and soak it all in and, and kind of figure out some things. And and so we just – we've done somewhat of a little bit of a scout on uh, on both teams just to ha kind of have it in our back pocket and then uh, – once we know it's an early game, it's the first game, so we'll kind of know we'll be able to sit down and, and really put all the uh, bows and ribbons on the on the scout and, and kind of figure out where we want to go from there. Okay, we'll talk about that tournament game coming up, but yeah. congratulations. You, be, be the, you were the king of the hill, you know, all season long and, and in the league, and 
got the lead back from Cowley with a win on their home court, and they just held everybody at bay. Uh, congratulations. I know it's got to be very satisfying for you and everybody associated with the, your basketball team. Yeah, no, I think, um, you know, obviously uh, the outcome was, was what, exactly what we wanted. Um, but, uh, you know, just really proud of the guys for hanging in there and, and just battling night in and night out. And then, you know, we've talked about being locked in and, and on edge and those type of things, and they've just continued to do those things. Um, you know, of course, we had some games where maybe we didn't play quite as well, but, you know, the depth of this team has been tremendous. And, you know, I think some, some awards came out yesterday, and, you know, we may have had some guys on that list maybe that didn't quite get the recognition that they deserved. But I think, you know, like I told them, there's nobody else in Kansas that's going to have a ring on their finger at the end of the day. And, you know, was able to cut down those nets, you know, and, and so, you know, that was the sacrifice for it, and, and all our guys were good with it. I think we've seen that all year, though, from them, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of unselfishness, and it's, it's a family, and it's, uh, you know, it's about, it's about them and, and, and not just one person. We've had a lot of people on the show this week talking about your team, and, and every one of them has come, you know, one of the keys that, you know, what, and they bring up defense. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good and I think once you know the day, the and day, maturity I heard yeah, that plenty. yeah I heard maturity as well and I think it's that those are all true the, the thing about it is I really think we've scratched the surface on them, several things there's there's a lot you know that, that that makes this team pretty good um you know this and when we're hitting on all cylinders that's when you're seeing the big wins um but 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 the maturity the talent and some of that stuff you know was, was winning those close games and things like that but uh there's a lot of things this team does really well, um, you know, and so there's a lot to be proud of for them. When did you ever get comfortable in that Hutch game? I was comfortable, me up by thirty or whatever it was, but then, yeah. but then, you know, they. they I, they I had a feeling when I can't remember even the time on the clock. I just remember the exact play, and Mose just made through a dime to somebody for for a bucket, and. Uh, I just pointed at him, and I knew we were we were hitting on all cylinders. And then defensively, it was on our end, obviously, in the first half. And our communication was probably better than it had ever been all year long. Um, you know, we were switching things that, that we talked about. I mean, it was like the game plan was, was perfectly being executed. And so at that point, you're kind of like, all right, we're dialed in. We're locked in. This is... This is going to happen, um, but we knew we at halftime we, we we talked about it. We knew they were going to make a run, and, and uh, just like Callie did to them the night before, um, and and they did. But I thought we responded very well once they kind of cut it down a little bit. Second time around, cut down nets. Evaluate the process. How do you think it went? It, <laughs> it, it it was. I mean, you know, it was just as fun as the first time. Okay, was. all right, okay. I mean, and obviously, you know. I think it was probably for our fans was pretty sweet doing it on yeah. the on on yeah. Hutchinson's floor, you know. Um, and again, I have all the respect for Hutchinson. I have all the respect for their their coaching staff and and Gooch over there, and um, and I love it. But uh, I know our fans. There's a lot of fans that, and then I know there's a lot of uh, Hutch fans that probably didn't like it very well either. <laughs> but uh, but no, it was it was pretty sweet. But it was it was really good. It was fun. Okay, have you ever played five games at the sports arena before as a coach? No, I don't think so. I think yeah. the year, the year, the last time that I went to the national tournament, um, I think that was the year we were only doing crossover games. Yeah, so yeah. we played one time at Hutch, and that was it. And then we did happen to play over there. Um, and then the region tournament was at uh, Oh Hartman Arena. You know, so yeah, we had one one game under our belt on that floor. So having having five is is pretty big. You might get double digits. They're close to it. <laughs> okay. You, you come with it. Yeah. I mean, you come yeah. up with that. Yeah. Okay. When you look at this being in the tournament, just look at who's in. I mean, just the overall field. Uh, wh what do you think when you see some of those names? And it's, you know, this is, it's it's like the polar opposite of last year. You know, last year there were some ups, quite a few upsets in the region tournaments. And, and so some of those teams, and, you know, that's, I thought we deserved to be in there. Um, but, but um, you know, due to all those upsets, we didn't we didn't get in. Um, this year, it, it, it just seems like some of the top teams that you've been watching all year long or seen, you know, make good runs through their, their conference, they're, they're, uh, they're there. And so this is tough. I mean, even when you look at at-large at at -large bids, you're looking at Daytona is one of the, Daytona State's one of the at-large bids that 
they were ranked in the top five for quite a while there, you know, and, and uh, Cali's in there, obviously, and Hutch, and there's some really good teams that got some at-large bids. So let's just start uh, thoughts on Daytona State. Yeah. Um, you know, they play a lot like Hutch kind of did there for a couple of years where they're pressing and trapping and shooting a ton of threes. I think they lead the nation. They're first in the nation in three-point attempts and three-point makes. Uh, they're second in scoring. Um you know, so they're 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 going to get after it, and we're going to have to guard the three point line. We're going to have to rebound and do those type of things. So, um, no, they're a really good team. What on the then you go to Walters State. Mm-hmm. What you yeah. talk about their style? They're uh, they're scoring it a bunch too. They don't press quite as much, but they do shoot it a lot, and and they've got some good players, and and they've got a really good coach, and and uh, you know they run they run some good stuff. They're they're more probably like a, oh they're probably more like a. Uh, Garden City team, you know, um, where uh, Daytona is more of a up up tempo pressure and mm-hmm. that type of thing. So two kind of different styles, but yet two teams that are really scoring the heck out of basketball. This is your second time through it, so how does that help you as a coach? Yeah, well, and you know, the crazy part is it's it's changed since since I was last there. So um, you know, it's they keep they keep changing things up and for the better and. And uh, so the tournament's going to be pretty fun. But, uh, um, you know, just being there the first time. Or, um, but this, this time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit back and enjoy it a little bit. It's going to be different down there. We, Glenn Grunwald was in on the show yesterday. And he's telling me there's going to be like corporate suites down in the end zone now. That, that'll kind of change the look of it. While yeah, you, yeah, I heard that. And it's going to be interesting. I, I don't like the fact that, uh, <clears throat> you know, the – Student athletes are going to have to go upstairs and sit. I think they're supposed, we're supposed to be in the yellow section to sit there, and you know, it, it just changes the environment. You know, we're not right down there on the floor, and I think the uh, uh, bands are going to have to go upstairs as well, which is going to be interesting. Um, so yeah, it's it's a different different situation. I you know somebody had mentioned what's going to happen when Mose throws one to Leger and he misses it and it goes flying into the <laughs> into the corporate section, and you know that. <laughs> So that'll be interesting, but uh, yeah, it, it, you know, something new. So I guess we'll see. We'll see if it's something they like, and if they do, they'll, they'll probably keep it going. If not, they'll change it back. I may knock over their shrimp cocktail. I don't know. <laughs> never know. Going Hopefully on they don't have any flames over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got all these hibachis going yeah. on in there. So how do you handle uh, right now? What's the travel? Are you going to go down there on Sunday and stay, or are you just going to go down there the same day so to we, start things off? I really would have liked to have gone down there on Sunday, but. Um, they put us in. Uh, we're in McPherson, at the at, at a hotel. So, um, so, so it kind of <laughs> defeated the purpose of uh, going down and then just you know, driving over across the street to a hotel and and checking in and all that kind of stuff. So, instead of driving all the way to check in in McPherson and go back for our four o'clock shoot around time, then drive all the way back up there and then drive all the way back for a shoot around in the morning and then drive all the way back to, to get off our feet for a little bit and then drive back for the game. We're just to, what we're going to do is is Monday we'll go down like we normally would for an away game. Okay, get there for the for the game ahead of us, which is actually Hutch. Um, you know, get to see them and play a little bit, kind of go through a normal routine, and then after that we'll go check in and kind of get settled in. Do they have a place place for you to practice in McPherson, or is it just you go there and then you go back down? To yeah, <laughs> so they have everything's in Hutch. So. Okay. Um, now we can practice all in in McPherson if we want. And that's what we'll end up doing. But we'll reach out to. We've already reached out to uh, McPherson College and and uh, you know reserve a spot for us just to get in there and get some shots up and things like that. So yeah, it's um, it's not ideal. But they, they did say as teams lose, if if you continue to win and you're not in Hutch, they'll once people move out, they'll move you in. So. Well, how do they do that? They draw the names out of a hat, or is it, well, okay, we'll send them. I have no idea. The, okay. the only way that, I, that I'm good with this is they're probably looking at it maybe going, all right, all these this Florida teams try to travel from Florida. These, these, maybe these Kansas teams, them going to Hutch and then having to go to McPherson isn't quite as bad as having to travel from Florida or Texas or whatever. So I, that's kind of how I'm justifying it. Well, I don't know if North, North – they t- I mean, how do those schools travel? I mean, they can show up there in a Bluebird bus, or uh, how do you, how do you go? Some of those, some of those schools. I think that team that Hutch is playing, that uh, USC Sakahachi. Mm-hmm. I think they're. I heard they're taking a bus, but some of those other ones are flying in. So yeah, I know Sheldon State's flying in, Daytona's flying in. 
So, yeah. <laughs> Quite a deal. Beeland's going into next week. I feel good. I mean, you know, it, I know it's tournament time. We've, 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 you know, kind of went through the turn, you know, went through the conference, and which is, I think it's, it's much easier to win a conference championship because you're, you know, you got a lar- larger body of work to deal with. Um, tournaments are, you know, you can't have a bad day. They're, you know, it's, it's one and done, you know, so, and it's not like somebody had told me something about one of the teams at Barton went out there, lost their first game, but then won like the next three because they had more games to go. This is one and done. So, you know, it's, I feel good about it, but it, it's not going to be an easy deal. And especially with the, the teams that are in this tournament, you know, there's a bunch of really good teams and, and for us, it's right out of the gate, you know, so whichever team we get is going to be a, a tough game. Again, Glenn Grenwald was in, and I just, he, when he said, because he used to have the, you know, that you would have the consolation bracket, but you come in and, you know, you, you're a coach from a long ways away and you got these kids that, okay, and you lose that game. And then they, maybe they're not as invested in what's going on right now, but you still got to be in charge of them. Yeah. No, I don't want any part yeah, of that. No, <laughs> that's not a good deal. No. <laughs> Luckily, I got some good kids, yeah. and we obviously get to come back here, so it, it works out. Jeremy, good luck. Thank you. Appreciate Jeremy it. Combs, head coach of the Barton Cougars, with us on Sports Day. Connor Nickel coming up next. We get it. Life is busy. It's a constant rush from work to home to sports practice and still trying to have quality time with your family. The latest technology from Next Tech Wireless can help keep you connected and organized. Right now, when you get a new phone, you can get an Apple Watch or tablet on us. Stop by a store near you and visit with one of our wireless experts today. Next Tech Wireless, home on the range. Venture Corporation is a homegrown company with almost 50 years of experience in asphalt, paving, and construction, and they need equipment operators, mechanics, and CDL drivers. Venture offers many benefits, including 401k and Blue Cross Blue Shield health insurance. Call Leslie for all the details. Work for a family-owned and family-oriented company that is here today and will be here in the future. Venture Corporation, South Highway 281, Great Bend, is an equal opportunity employer. Community bankers should actually know your community. Hi, I'm Zach Streit, commercial lender for Equity Bank. As someone who lives here, I know many of you, and I know what's important to you. I've been in the industry a long time, and I've helped many navigate through financial challenges and lead them to financial opportunities. I believe that people bank with people. I'd like to invite you to stop by one of our region's five locations and meet our friendly, helpful staff. Let us show you our commitment to serving you and our communities. At Equity Bank, we're right here beside you. Member FDIC. It's Friday, and that means game day in the Golden Belt. To help us prime the pump, Sports Day brings you Sunflower Sports Solutions, Connor Nickel. Connor Nickel joins us on Fridays here on the program. Our show today brought you in part by the Marmy Auto Group. They're located on 10th Street in Great Bend, and by the American Plains Co-op Bulk Fuel Department, your certified Cenex Lubricant Dealer, also in part by Venture Corporation, reminding you to help a neighbor shop local when you can. Sunflower Sports Solutions, Connor Nickel with us today. NCAA tournament time's going on, and see, you're really good at picking these things out. This is perfect. I didn't know this. I don't know how many other people did. That's what you bring to the show, my friend. Okay, so we have Presbyterian women tonight taking on South Carolina in the NCAA women's tournament. It's a matchup between 1 and 16. Yet you have found a Kansas connection in all of this, Connor Nickel. <clears throat> yeah, so a couple of years ago when Presbyterian College was going after Kansas kids, I was like, why? I mean, this is really interesting. So they are, so they've got a great nickname. They are, they are the Blue Hose. Um, this is a team that has never made the NCAA tournament before this season. Uh, their coach is from southeast Kansas. They have some other Kansas ties. And I believe uh, Carter Kruger, who, of course, coached liberal to several great, great seasons, um, his, uh, he has, a, he has a, a connection on the staff as well, as well too. Um, but they have gotten two Kansas girls, first um, Aubrey, Kirsch from Salina Central. Of course, we know her a couple of years ago, led Kansas and three pointers made as Salina Central from the second that, that year. She originally 
committed to Navy um, for quite some time, actually, then switched that to commitment late. She had a great freshman year last season and then got hurt this year. She Five games in, she shot all, all five games. Um, and but then she was hurt the rest of the of the year, and then Ashley Carrillo, who of course whack uh, folks probably remember, you know she was with the uh, liberal program too. She has started almost half their games this season um, and put up a good solid line. Ashley had posted a photo of her and Dawn Staley on Twitter. Um, of course, Dawn Staley coaching something. South Carolina, um, saying, "Wow, you know what a great, great moment, something of that of that sort." So, you know, for for this team, you know, so many of these lower tier tier seeds, it, it's really, really neat to see what they do uh, and how they how they qualify and some of those those backstories. And obviously, the first ever NCAA tournament qualifi- qualification for for the school. You mentioned Carter Kruger, and of course, he was at Barton before he went to Liberal to coach the girls' program there. What's Carter doing now? Um, I believe I uh, he has got an administrative position. I want to say in more south east, south central east Kansas. Okay. Um, I want to say it's like not El Dorado, but I think somewhere in that territory there. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk about wrestling today. Because the Shrine Wrestling Duels, yeah, they took place. And there's a former Hoisington wrestler that did pretty well. Yeah, so this was a really cool event. Um, I, I, I even got asked about it this morning. I mean, this has been a, a major kind of talking point for a while now. So, obviously, the, the Shrine Bowl in the summer is extremely well, well known. But they, they had the Shrine Wrestling Duels. And there was a boy from um, Ellis, actually, who has he has a uh, prosthetic leg but participates in all three sports. Uh, and he actually spoke, uh, you know, before the uh, matches started, kind of a neat moment there. Newman, and this is to every, everybody has said this, Newman put on a fantastic event. It is the perfect size. They had a really good, good crowd. Uh, they kind of combined the girls' and boys' matches to, to uh, together. Um, so you had East beating West, but that was the girls' matches plus the boys' matches combined. And Sheena Joshua at, at 101 pounds, obviously she is from Winfield now, but wrestled for Hoisington her first several several years. Um, she won her match actually in um, overtime, and she had a tremendous career. Hayes High had a boy, a former state champion, at 149. He won his match by fall. Colby had a girl who was undefeated this winter, also won state the previous year too, and she won her match by t ball by by t fall. And I believe he is the only person who has done this but sebastian lopez from garden city got put on both shrine bowl teams really so he is right now expected to compete this summer obviously brian hill at, uh, told me coach hill at garden city a couple of years ago when sebastian lopez was starting as, as a sophomore he goes he is as good as any lineman i have ever had and he might end up being my best ever one and considering what Garden City is well known for, linemen, uh, that's really saying a lot. So Lopez started, I believe, three years on the line, and obviously with her 285 five pound guy, uh, he won his match by fall uh, over Keenan White from Coffeyville. And Keenan White was a consensus top 10, top 15 lineman in, in the state. This last fall and had a great, great uh, you know career on the mat too. So that Lopez versus White match, two uh, terrific multi-sport players there, and, and kind of neat, neat to see you know a, a whack player do do well. So I think what you say, this is the first year for it, and it's and it was good. So it's only going to get better, right? Yeah, I really liked like the format. Um, two of the Joaquini ladies who I know through my church, uh, they both competed. Uh, neither of them won their match, but uh, still, just it was a really fun event. They were really excited to be picked. 
uh, the, I, probably the, the stronger of the two, Joaquini girls. She's now the all-time Trigo girls leader in wins. She was, uh, I think she was fourth this last year. Um, and again, I think that Newman is just a great, great venue. You know, as I mentioned in the past, I'm, I'm a fan of the, of the smaller venues, if you can have a really big crowd there. Um, and again, I think Newman just, just did this really, really well. Connor Nickel with us here on Sports Day today. And one of the things that you follow, because, heck, you talk to so many coaches and things like this, a lot of times, you know, we, we <laughs> there's a coaching change. You don't find out until, like, July, you know. But the, you said there's some multiple open coaching positions in the area. Yeah, and kind of the, the thing to really keep note of is a lot of the basketball openings right now. Um, a major one was Keith Sides at uh, Peaberg. Um, you know, he's been there 20 plus years. Obviously, Trey Sides, Ty Sides, his boys. Obviously, Terrence Sides, who's also playing this weekend as well, um, uh, is also his, his, his daughter. You know, Terrence Sides, basically the first guard off the bench for K State. Has been a you know a really important member of that that team really all season long, and I expect her to be the starting point guard next year. Um, he has elected to step aside, and he put in a very similar way to when Jim Ryan retired at Central Plains. Uh, you know, basically after the previous season, he said, "I want to go watch my my child play." basketball um, and obviously he was at basically every Iowa State game this year he sides was very very public he goes this is my last child um, he's also a child that's you know an exceptional exceptional player he goes I want to go see her games and so he is going to step aside um, I know Plainville girls is is open uh, TMP has got got one opening now to um, Concordia just filled their football job uh, which was kind of an interesting um, kind of fit there. Brad, a guy, Dr. Colby, um, who had been out there for some time, he, he took that uh, position. Um, and Concordia has always been considered to be a sleeping giant. It, it's always a job that I've kind of kept my eye on from a journalist standpoint because I, a lot of people believe that if you have the right guy in there, you can do really well. Um, and, of course, they face – several Golden Belt area teams each year, so could be something to watch out for. Obviously, as we do know, Christian Azores and Russell, who we've talked about a lot uh, over the last two years, turned around that program amazingly. He has taken the job at Salina South, and so Russell just filled their position with somebody within the last week or so. I don't really know a whole lot about him. seems to be a relatively... Uh, young person and uh but yeah christian azores so if we can turn around a slide the south program that has really really struggled the last four or five years okay what job at tmp is open right now girls basketball correct so rose has stepped down um yeah there was uh there was a there was an, an, an um, announcement that had went out uh that that she will not be uh back uh next year okay well golly i used to play noon ball basketball against her uh-huh. up, up in the a, so uh she had some very but good so are you going to take that job i i i, I don't know and uh, <laughs> as, as of right now that uh and then and then the administration has you know they'll be making those those uh, choices um, I, I would, you know, I really enjoyed my time with the program this, this year, obviously coaching the junior high and being a high school assistant coach. Um, so, you know, we'll see how it all, all plays out. I do want to say that, uh, coach McFarland meant, it means a lot to me and, and I, I really appreciate everything that she's done, uh, for, for me, for sure. Listen, if you, if you get some head coaching job, you still got to come on here on Fridays. I don't care if you got a road game out to Oakley. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, you mentioned Keith sides and how long he's 23 years at Phillipsburg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and he's just a tremendous coach. And I, before Hoisden played up, uh, they were playing at Phillipsburg and that's the first time I'd really had a chance to talk with him about, uh, you know, about 20 minute conversation. What an engaging person he is and really just a, a level guy. And, and yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, what a good builder of young men up in Phillipsburg that now is going to get enjoy watching his daughter play. 
Yeah, and I've enjoyed Coach Side so much over over the years. And, you know, he, uh, some people know this, but, you know, at Northern Valley, so his twin brother coaches the Northern Valley boys um, and has had in some capacity for a number of years now. Um, and his twin brother still has kids that are going through high school. I think older one for sure is, is now out. Uh, but um, on the 1990, you know, late late 80s, early 90s team, when Northern Valley was going through that that extensive stretch of, of just state championships, you know, those uh, side brothers were really, really key there. Uh, <clears throat> and then Keith's wife, Robin, who was the assistant coach for Peeber girls basketball and a coach at the junior high level for many, many years. Robin, she played volleyball at Hutch. So you've got two really level-headed, super gifted people um, who obviously have done a lot for, for Peeber in a variety of programs. Coach Sy has also coached golf for a very long time. Um, and and obviously three kids that are really even keeled. You know, Ty Sides, it's crazy. Ty Sides, Shrine Bowl MVP, three-year starter at quarterback, three-plus-year starter in basketball, finished second in basketball one year, um, scored a bunch of points, and he is the third-best athlete in his own family. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well said. Well said. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, Keith Sides is a class act. Okay, uh, high school basketball, a couple of players in our area uh, finished pretty good. Yeah, finished very well in the overall stats in Kansas in a couple of statistics. Yes, and um, the, the uh, complete list should be out here, I would say, the next four to six days, um, probably even as early as Sunday. Uh, but Lee Holoparek for lacrosse this year, somebody that we had mentioned about, you know, the improve. What did what did lacrosse improve so much on from last year to uh, to this? Uh, Three point shooting. And what Lee what Lee did um, this year, first in Kansas in three pointers made, and also second in Kansas in three point field goal shooting percentage. So really an, an exceptional, exceptional player. And then uh, Diego Esparza from Maxville um, actually finished third in scoring. He was first for the vast majority of the season. But Owen Reese from Jetmore finished a touch above him. Then there was a guy from Newton, percentage points higher. But Diego of Esparza, who scored over 40 several games this year, averaged 26 points a game this season. Um, so two Golden Belt area boys that maybe you know we, we forget about sometimes posting very very high on the on the state list. And then one girl I wanted to mention is Heidi Fisher from from St. John's. Um, I had dominated her. I know several others did too for 1A1 player of the, of the year, which is basically saying you're a top 10 kid in that in that class. Um, she's not going to win. But, you know, Steve, you're a baseball guy, and getting those, quote, down-ballot MVP votes yeah. still means you're really good. Yeah. And, 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 you know, Heidi Fisher, a four-year starter, St. John going to state, losing a competitive game against the team that eventually won the uh, state, state championship. Uh, you know, St. John had just a wonderful season. Okay, it's opening day for softball and baseball teams today. Although, yeah, Dre been yeah, playing there's, baseball there's yesterday, a few teams but yeah, who are in in um, action. Uh, TMP is at Russell and softball, and then uh, Larned baseball is at TMP. There was also a jamboree earlier this week uh, that had Ellis and Larned and Colby in it, and it's kind of like the fall where. I mean, you're kind of mixing things up, and people are playing in maybe some different positions, and you're just doing some different things. But I heard that Larned softball, a team that we had mentioned last spring several times, was having a really big, big jump, uh, really performed well. So Larned softball could be a team to certainly um, check out for sure. Okay. Anything else? Today? What's going on on, on the uh, Sunflower Sports Solutions right now? Yeah, so we're going to have a couple of stories out this this weekend. We had a story 
kind of a feel-good story that actually generated about 3,000 views. Uh, Hayes High Girls, of course, their best season since 2012. Um, and then they had one senior, Bridget Ross, um, and she was a role player, but she accepted her role incredibly well, was a team, team captain. Uh, everybody loved her. And I made the point off of a scholarly study that teams have shown, again, using a baseball reference, when you have some of those older veterans who don't play a whole lot, but when they play, they play well, but they just kind of they're really good for team for team chem- chemistry. And and Ross was that for Hayesheim, and her last one shining moment of her career came against Great Bend, and the last regular season game, you know, it's a close game. Bridget Ross hits the third three of her season, third three of her career, last three of her, and then and then the last three of her of her career to give Hayes High the lead. It was the buzzer beater three right before the first half ended. Yeah. Uh, the last three she ever made, Hayes High never trailed after that. Beat Great Ben, captured them in the field last season, and obviously went on to the postseason from there. Okay, and we have uh, all. People can go there. Just check out the site. Uh, here we go into and and what are you going to have? I mean, you're all over the softball and baseball stuff, that, and track and field as well. Yes, yeah. So we're going to have again as we've had uh, every week since August. We always have at least two stories a week. Uh, we always have uh, most weeks more. And so last week we had three. One of those being a very long form story. Uh, and so, yeah, we've got a couple stories that will go up here this weekend. Um, actually, then we're working on one or two this afternoon. Um, and then we've got some end-of-the-season end basketball things that will be up, be up as well, too. Softball, as we kind of mentioned last week, uh, really uh, keeping an eye on Haven, on Haven and, and Hoisington. The 3A, re, the 3A is always really good. But this year... The amount of talent, particularly in the circle in 3A softball, is ridiculously high. Uh, and Hoisington's definitely a part of that. Haven is, too. Silver Lake's got a Washburn commit. Santa Fe Trail's got a KU commit. So just tremendous, tremendous 3A talent. Connor, appreciate you. We'll talk to you next Friday. Sounds good, Steve. Thank All you. All right, Connor Nickel with Sunflower Sports Solutions here with us on Sports Day. Brought to you in part by Next Tech Wireless, where you can experience wireless built by Kansans for Kansas. Equity Bank, right here beside you, equitybank.com. And the Cougar Booster Club, continuing their efforts to make the Barton Athletic Department one of the best in the At the, the University country. of Kansas Sports Health Day, System, on. they understand that sometimes your busy schedule means that you just need a more convenient appointment time. That's why they now offer after-hours MRI testing appointments from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. one day a week. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call 620-791-6205. The medical care you need on a schedule that works for you. At the University of Kansas Health System. We get it. Life is busy. It's a constant rush from work to home to sports practice and still trying to have quality time with your family. The latest technology from Next Tech Wireless can help keep you connected and organized. Right now, when you get a new phone, you can get an Apple Watch or tablet on us. Stop by a store near you and visit with one of our wireless experts today. Next Tech Wireless, home on the range. Boy, time flies when you're just having fun. Which mic are you on? Two? Two. All right. NCAA tournament update. 4.35 to go in the game. Baylor leading Colgate, 81-62. San Diego State with a 31-24 lead over UAB. That's with 3.49 to go in the first half. 9.04 to go in the first half. Marquette leading Western Kentucky, 25 25- 217 coming up here in just a moment. Number one seed UConn taking on Stetson. K State women play later today, so I'll look forward to that. And KU tomorrow, you can catch it 130 on hits 1069. The toothpaste isn't a match for the Bruins from Waco. <laughs> Colgate. Yep. 